Hi, my name is Jenny Hung. I'm a radiologist at Duke University and also the principal investigator on the ACR Tyrads ultrasound registry. The purpose of this video is to help radiologists and sonographers who are just starting out and trying to incorporate ACR Tyrads into their work practice. So ACR Tyrads is a risk stratification system that was published in May 2017 and this is a method of identifying nodules that need further workup or biopsy when you see them on ultrasound. In this talk I'm going to give you an overview of how the risk stratification system works. I am going to give you an approach to triaging nodules for workup uh, so that you'll save some time and then we'll talk about some special scenarios. Now, as you probably know, there are multiple risk stratification systems out there, but ACR Tyrads differs in several ways. First of all, it's a point space system, uh, and points are allocated for five different categories of findings. These are added up to give you the ACR Tyrads level, and then the management for biopsy or follow-up or nothing depends on the size. The other difference is that states that no more than two nodules should be biopsied and no more than four nodules should receive follow-up. What does this mean? Well, you are not going to need to report more than four nodules in the radiology report. Next, it has higher size thresholds for biopsy of low suspicion lesions and it also designates no biopsy for some nodules that look benign. So let's apply it to this nodule here. Uh, this is a nodule that has a solid composition, so it receives a score of 2, which is the highest score for composition. Then its echogenicity, it is isoechoic to the thyroid, so it receives a point of 1. If it was hypo or very hypoechoic, the, the points would be higher. The shape is not taller than wide, and so it receives 0 points for that. The margin is smooth, so it receives 0 points. The high suspicion margins are lobulated or regular and then extra thyroidal extension. And then for echogenic foci, there aren't any echogenic foci, so it receives zero points. And note that comet tail artifacts that are large also receive zero points. At the other end of the spectrum, if there were punctate echogenic foci, that would be three points. This adds up to uh, three points, and it would be a tyrad three lesion, which is only mildly suspicious. And FNA would be performed if it was 2.5 centimetres or greater, or follow-up would be done if it was less than 2.5 centimetres but greater than but 1.5 centimetres or greater. Uh, next we have a nodule that looks uh, far more suspicious. Uh, the composition is again solid, so it receives two points. Echogenicity, this time it is very hypoechoic, and that's relative to the uh, strap muscles. Then for the shape, it isn't taller than wide. The margin, uh, it's ill-defined, so it receives zero. It's uh, quite hard to evaluate the margin here on this one image. And then echogenic foci, there are actually small punctate echogenic foci, uh, so it receives three points for that. The total is eight points, which puts it into a tyrad five lesion. FNA, if it's a centimeter or greater, uh, follow-up if it's 0.5 centimeters or greater. Then this nodule here is not solid. Uh, it's mixed cystic and solid, so it receives one point. The echogenicity is determined from the solid component of this nodule, and it is isoechoic, so it's one point. And then for shape, margins, and echogenic foci, it receives zero points, so this is a two-point nodule, and this is a tyrads two. This does not get FNA or follow-up, regardless of size. Now what happens with follow-up? Well, depending on whether it's tyrad 3, 4 or 5, the intervals of follow-up are different. The first follow-up is always one year, but the subsequent follow-ups up to five years is uh, different. Now I wanted to tell you about some of the resources available. This is supposed to be a very short talk so that people will listen to it, but the uh, publications are on the ACR website. Uh, there's also a link to an atlas on the ACR website, as well as some structured reporting templates and a sonographer's worksheet to get you started. And I'll put that link at the, in the comments box below. 
Next, I want to talk to you about an approach. Uh, and it seems by looking at the scoring system that it would take a long time to report these thyroid ultrasounds with ACR tyrads, but there are ways to improve your workflow. Uh, the first thing you should know about, and probably the most important thing, is that you don't need to describe every nodule. Uh, you don't need to score every nodule, and you certainly don't need to report every nodule in your report. Just the nodules that require further management with biopsy or follow-up. This means that it's very helpful to become familiar with nodules that you can dismiss as the good, good nodules and then focus on the nodules that you need to add up the points for. And then the other thing is because we only recommend follow-up for four nodules, up to four nodules, then you only need to describe the four most suspicious nodules. So if you have six tyroid five nodules in the thyroid, then you would describe the four with the highest points. Uh, I would also recommend that the sonographer scans the thyroid and gets an overview before you capture any images and decide on the four nodules that you want to image. How do you decide on nodules that you can dismiss? Well, first of all, I would start on with the composition, then the echogenicity, then to confirm it only has benign features, and then, if you need to, measure the size. What do I mean by this? Well, first of all, starting off with composition helps because there are certain nodules that you can dismiss by just looking at the composition. These are cysts and spongiform nodules. But make sure that if you're calling a spongiform nodule, it really is spongiform. It doesn't have any other aggressive features. If it's spongiform, then you don't add any other points and this nodule is automatically a tyrads one. Then the third nodule is a nodule that's mixed cystic and solid in composition. If you see that, you next look at the echogenicity. And if it happens to be iso or hypochoic, and then it doesn't have any other suspicious features, uh, then this is a tyrads two nodule. So tyrads one, cystic and spongiform, tyrads two is this type of mixed cystic solid nodule. If your referrers are following the ATA guidelines and you need to include that in your report, then just be aware that the ATA recommends biopsy for spongiform nodules two centimeters and greater, and this type of tyrads two nodule, the mixed cystic and solid nodule, when it is 1.5 centimeters or greater. Then if you've got a good handle on that, the next group of nodules to be familiar with in terms of the pattern and to dismiss them if they're less than 1.5 centimeters are these three categories. Mixed cystic and solid, isoechoic, but only with macro calcifications. And then mixed cystic and solid, this time hypoechoic, but also without echogenic foci or only large cometal artifacts. And then there's one solid nodule that can meet this criteria, and this is a solid nodule that's iso or hyperechoic, uh, but also without echogenic foci or any large cometal, and or only large cometal artifact. These are all tyrads three nodules, and it, you would follow them up if they were 1.5 centimeters or greater, and biopsy if they're 2.5 centimeters or greater. These last two slides are summarized on this flowchart. And I've been told by some people that it looks busy. I've been told by other people that it's actually helpful. But this flowchart basically lists the tyrads 1, 2, and 3 nodules and helps you identify nodules that you can dismiss or score. Now onto the special scenarios. There are times that you're going to deviate from the ACR tyrads recommendations. For the first two cases, a pet avid nodule and suspicious lymph nodes, particularly if they're ipsilateral, this raises suspicion that the nodule could be the primary, and so um, you may biopsy it even though it doesn't meet the ACR tyrads recommendations. With regards to a previously biopsied nodule that you're following up, you can score it and give what ACR tyrads would recommend, but also acknowledge in the report that it has already been previously biopsied. And then what, are, what if you have a normal thyroid? Do they exist? Well, some people may not have nodules. Um, the lucky few, with a, it's pretty rare. Um, in those cases, you can just state that there are no nodules and not apply the ACR uh, tyrads template, of course. 
Uh, what about if it's uh, one or two nodules but they don't meet the criteria for biopsy and follow-up? Well, if you like, you can use the template and apply it and give the points and the tyrides level and say that it doesn't meet criteria for biopsy. Or you may also just say that there are two nodules that don't meet the criteria for biopsy or follow-up. So in summary, I've given you an overview of ACR Tyrad's risk stratification system, which is a points-based system. I would emphasize that you only need to report nodules that meet criteria for biopsy or follow-up. And because of that, you can save yourself a lot of time by recognizing nodules that can be dismissed. And these are Tyrad's one and two nodules and some Tyrad's three nodules. Thanks for listening to the video. Share it with your friends and colleagues if you found it helpful. And check out the ACR website for many more resources on ACR Tyrads. Thank you.